historically. So here is a brief history of the world. Very brief history of the world. Okay, so at some point, maybe um, we'll, we'll uh, put year zero there, and maybe not exactly a linear scale, year 1,000 there, uh, year 2,000 here. And maybe here we had 1,000 uh, BC and 2,000 BC. Okay, so what happened in the world? for the last four, 5,000 years. Well, there was a lot of political bickering and armies going back and forth and so on, but that's not really important to, for the whole big picture. Right? That's just politics. The really important uh, developments had to do with ideas and the corresponding technological developments that those ideas um, uh, gave rise to. So this is going to be, let's just position ourselves very quickly, sort of where were the major civilizations at what point. So early on, around 2000 BC, agrarian um, societies started to develop, large-scale agriculture started to develop in the Mesopotamia, Egyptian era, regions. So we had ancient Mesopotamia, or sometimes just called the Babylonians, and sort of roughly concurrent with them, the Egyptians, and uh, in the uh, east, we had uh, Indus Valley uh, Indians and uh, Chinese early empires also. The Greeks uh, don't really, so this is around 2000 BC. So the, the, now, so let, let's just uh, start with these. So of, of most of the interest, I suppose, in, in the story is the Babylonians and the Egyptians because they influenced the, the Greek period a lot. The Greek period uh, is, as you can tell from our list of topics, of fundamental importance because it was really the ancient Greeks that set up mathematics the way we know uh, now. And that happened, the Greek period is roughly uh, sort of like this sort of roughly a thousand year span from about uh, six, seven hundred BC to maybe 300 AD. So this was the, uh, the golden age of Greek mathematics and a lot of what we are studying in mathematics, especially in the history of mathematics, has to do with Greek mathematics or developments that came from the Greek mathematicians. And prominent amongst the Greek mathematicians were some very famous names. Well, Pythagoras was one, but probably more famous than Pythagoras was Euclid and Archimedes. I would say these are the two towering figures in ancient Greek uh, mathematics. But there were many other uh, important Greek mathematicians too. Okay, then... Uh, then we, we move on. Um, there was the Greek civilization died down and uh, essentially sort of a, a period of Arabic uh, Middle Eastern influence uh, took over. So we have sort of uh, Arabic uh, development starting from the Middle East but, but ultimately emerging into, into Europe and uh, so the Arabs are a bridge from the Greek mathematics to the Europeans. And the Europeans start perhaps roughly around 1400s, 1400, 1500. And then there's a kind of an explosion of activity in these, uh, these years. Okay? So there's a, a lot of activity as the Europeans start to digest the Greek ideas thanks to the Arabs that basically brought and preserved the, uh, the Greek ideas to Europe via Spain and, uh, and others. And uh, then there was this great uh, flowering of, of mathematics with many, many important names. But if we had to name the most important names, I would say that they were Newton and Euler, 
if I had to name the top two, I would say they're the most important sort of scientific figures of the modern era. There are also others, uh, Gauss um, prominently, and, and many others too. And, uh, and what happens here is that the mathematics becomes quite rich, and by the time we get to the, the 20th century, it becomes very complicated, and we're going to cut off uh, at the, the year 1900 roughly, so we're going to go up to there, up to the beginning of the 20th century, and not much further. Okay, so there's, there's some other things to say. There's a, there was a bit of Chinese work. Uh, there was certainly uh, Indian influence. The Indian influence was uh, also around this time here, and so I'll, I'll put that there. The Indian influence and the Arabic influence, I should maybe say, they uh, were combined in, in, in some ways. Uh, at least and certainly in terms of our number system. But there was certainly a very uh, important also Indian uh, strand in there as well. Okay, that's very roughly, uh, very simplistically, uh, a rough idea of, of sort of the time scale. And now we want to, in the next few lectures, we're going to go back in time to the years before Christ, around 700, 600 BC, and in this sort of thousand year period, which is roughly called the Greek period, uh, we're going to talk about various developments. Now, I should say, when one talks about Greek mathematics, one is not really talking about just mathematicians from Greece. Okay? One should understand that this is uh, a description of a rather broad area. The whole Eastern Mediterranean was basically Greek culture, Greek, Greek language, and some of the uh, main figures were not actually living in Greece at all. For example, Euclid was uh, mostly in Alexandria, the, the center of learning in Egypt, which was very important for, for many hundreds of years. There was a big library there. Right? And uh, Archimedes did, uh, well, spent a lot of time in, in Syracuse, which is in uh, present-day Sicily, an island off of Greece, off of Italy. And uh, so, and, and a lot of these mathematicians also traveled rather widely, so it, it's really a, a Greek sort of language, culture, or tradition. And there's various uh, portions of it, there's sort of an early and a, and a middle and a late period.